Welcome to our deep dive, everybody. Today we're talking all about electromagnetic waves. Ooh, yeah. That's some really cool stuff. Yeah. And it's like we're unlocking this secret code, you know? Totally. It explains how so many things work. It's like from your phone mm -hmm. to the sun, how everything, like, actually works. You yeah, know? and it's really not as complicated as it sounds. Exactly. Like, even if, like, you, you don't love science, yeah. you can totally get this, I promise. Think of it like this. Yeah. We're going to break down these invisible waves right. that are, like, all around us. Mm -hmm. It's like figuring out the different parts of a really cool machine. Yeah. So first things first, oh, yeah. what exactly are electromagnetic waves? Okay. Like imagine you're plucking a guitar string, right? You see it vibrating. Yeah. Yeah. And you hear the sound it makes. Yeah. So that vibration is sending out like waves of energy through the air okay. to your ear. Okay. Electromagnetic waves are similar. But instead of vibrating air, they're made of vibrating electric and magnetic fields. Okay. And get this. Okay. They can travel through empty space. No way. So, like, how does light from the sun get to us? That's exactly it. If there's nothing but space in between. They don't need anything to travel through, like air or water. Oh, wow. They're like the ultimate space travelers. Whoa, that's... Uh... That's mind blowing. So they're oh. carrying energy uh -huh. like light and heat across the whole universe. You got it. And just like there are different kinds of sounds like high notes, low notes, mm -hmm. there are different kinds of electromagnetic waves. OK. And we organize them on something called the electromagnetic spectrum. So it's like a giant chart of all the different electromagnetic waves. Exactly. And it's arranged from waves with the longest wavelength okay. to the shortest wavelengths. Got it. And here's a cool thing. OK. The longer the wave, the lower the energy. Okay. The shorter the wave, the higher the energy. So it's like the really big waves, those are the ones with... Yeah, think about it like this right. long, slow ocean waves. Yeah. Those are pretty chill, right? Yeah. But short, choppy waves, those have a lot more power, you know? That makes sense. So what kind of waves are we talking about here? Okay, so let's start with the longest waves. Okay. Radio waves. Radio waves, okay. You know how you listen to music on the radio? Yeah, yeah. That's because radio stations are sending out radio waves okay. that your radio can pick up. So those invisible waves are carrying the music right through the air Yes. to my radio. Exactly. Oh, and it's not just music. Radio waves are used for all sorts of communication. Oh, wow. TV, cell phones, even Wi-Fi. Wow. So they're like the messengers of the airwaves. They really are. Yeah. Now let's move on to microwaves. The microwaves, okay. You probably use these every day. You mean like in a microwave oven? Exactly. Microwaves are shorter than radio waves. Okay. And have a bit more energy. Okay. And that energy makes water molecules vibrate. Oh. Which yeah. heats up your food. Ah, so that's why the inside of the microwave gets hot. Uh-huh. But isn't there something about, like, microwaves being used for other things, too? You're right. Microwaves are also used for things like Bluetooth okay. and radar. Oh, so, okay. like, when you connect your headphones wirelessly to your phone, mm. that's microwaves in action. So microwaves are like these little invisible helpers just making our lives easier. Right. What comes next on the spectrum? Next up is infrared. Infrared. Okay. And we experience this as heat. Oh, yeah. Like when you stand by a fire and you feel the warmth radiating out. That's infrared. It's also what those night vision goggles use really? to see in the dark. What? They detect the infrared heat given off by objects. Whoa. That's like having a superpower. Mm. So radio waves, mm -hmm. microwaves, infrared. I, uh -huh. Got it. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Okay. Visible light. Ooh. This is the only part of the electromagnetic spectrum that our eyes can actually see. Wait, so all the colors we see? Like yeah. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. All of them. Those are all just different types of light waves. Exactly. Each color has a slightly different wavelength. What? Red has the longest. Really? And violet has the shortest. So it's like a rainbow is a display of all the different wavelengths of visible light. It really is. That's awesome. Now let's go past the visible spectrum okay. to something we can't see. Okay. Ultraviolet or UV rays. UV rays, that's what gives us sunburn. Right. UV rays have shorter wavelengths than visible light, mm -hmm. which means they have more energy. Makes sense. Too much exposure can be harmful to our skin. Yeah. That's why we wear sunscreen. Sunscreen is like our armor against those powerful UV waves. Exactly. But UV light isn't all bad. Okay. It also helps our bodies produce vitamin D. Okay. which is essential for strong bones. So it's like UV rays are both a friend and foe. You could say that. Okay, ready for some even shorter wavelengths? Bring it on. What's next? X-rays. 
These have enough energy to pass through our skin and muscles, oh, well. but are absorbed by denser materials like bone. That's why we use x-rays to see if we have broken bones, right? Exactly. It's like they give doctors superpowers to see inside our bodies. Exactly. But like UV rays, too much exposure to x-rays can be harmful. Yeah, yeah. That's why doctors only use them when it's really necessary. Makes sense. We're on the last type of ways now, right? We are. What is it? Gamma rays. Gamma rays, okay. These were the shortest waves on the electromagnetic spectrum mm. and have the most energy, way more than X-rays. Wow, so they must be incredibly powerful. What are they used for? Gamma rays are used in medicine to kill cancer cells. Wow. And to sterilize medical equipment. Oh, wow. And they're also used in some pretty amazing scientific research to, to study distant objects in space, like black holes. So gamma rays are like the superheroes of the electromagnetic spectrum. They are. But... Probably best to keep a safe distance, well, right? Exactly. It's all about harnessing their power responsibly. Yeah. Now, to understand why some of these waves are more dangerous than others, okay, we need to talk about something called ionization. Ionization? Okay. So imagine an atom, like a tiny solar system, okay. with electrons orbiting around the nucleus, okay, like planets around the sun. Okay, I can picture that. Now, high energy waves like UV rays, X-rays, and gamma rays, mm -hmm. They pack enough punch to actually knock those electrons out of their orbits. Really? It's like a cosmic game of billiards. So that's what ionization is. Yes. Those powerful waves are knocking electrons off of atoms. You got it. And when that happens to atoms in living cells, it can cause damage. It's like throwing a wrench into a delicate machine. Yeah. Things can start to go wrong. Ah, that makes sense. No. So too much UV radiation can cause sunburns and even skin cancer, right? Exactly. And that's why we need to be careful with things like x-rays, too. Mm -hmm. Doctors make sure you only get exposed to a small amount. Because even though they're helpful for seeing inside your body, yeah. too much radiation can be harmful. So it's like a balancing act. Right. Using those powerful ways for good, mm. but respecting their potential to cause harm. You've got it. Now, wouldn't it be cool to know who figured all of this stuff out in the first place? Totally. Who were the masterminds who cracked the code of electromagnetic waves? Well, one of the biggest heroes in this story is James Clerk Maxwell. Okay. He was a Scottish scientist okay. who lived in the 1800s. Yeah. And he came up with a set of equations that basically unified electricity, magnetism, and light. Wait, so he's saying that electricity and magnetism are connected to light? How is that even possible? It's pretty mind-blowing, right? Yeah. Maxwell's equations showed that electricity and magnetism are two sides of the same coin. Okay. They create these fields that interact with each other. Mm. And guess what? Those interacting fields create electromagnetic waves, including light. He predicted their existence even before they were experimentally proven. Wow, that's incredible. So Maxwell was like the architect of electromagnetic theory. Who else played a key role in these discoveries? Well, we can't forget Heinrich Hertz. Heinrich Hertz, okay. He was a German physicist okay. who actually proved Maxwell's predictions were right. Wow. Hertz conducted experiments that created and detected radio waves for the first time. So Maxwell came up with a theory, and Hertz actually made it a reality in the lab. That's teamwork. Mm -hmm. Who else was involved in this scientific dream team? Another big name is Michael Faraday. Michael Faraday. He was a brilliant English scientist mm -hmm. who made a ton of important discoveries in electromagnetism. Okay. One of his biggest contributions was the concept of electromagnetic induction. Electromagnetic what now? That sounds complicated. It's actually a pretty simple idea. Imagine you have a magnet. Okay. And you move it near a wire. Okay. Faraday discovered that this movement actually creates an electric current in the wire. Right. That's electromagnetic induction. So moving magnets can create electricity. Mm -hmm. That's wild. Where do we see that in action? Well, guess what? That's how generators work. What? Wow. They use magnets and coils of wire to generate electricity. Whoa. So thanks to Faraday, we can power our homes and cities. Yeah. Any other scientific rock stars we should know about? Definitely. We have André-Marie Ampère. Okay. A French physicist and Hans Christian Ersted, okay. a Danish physicist. Okay, tell me about Ampere. Well, he was fascinated by the relationship between electricity and magnetism. Okay. Just like Faraday, yeah. he did a lot of experiments with electric currents and magnets. Okay, and, and what did he find out? 
Ampere figured out that when electricity flows through a wire, okay, it creates a magnetic field around the wire. So electricity creates magnetism. Yes. That's kind of like what Faraday discovered, right? Exactly. They were both working on different aspects of the same fundamental force. Okay. Electromagnetism. Electromagnetism, right. okay. And Ampere even came up with a way to measure the strength of that magnetic field. Oh, wow. It's called Ampere's Law. Ampere's Law? I bet that's something electrical engineers use all the time. You bet. Now, on to Arsted. Okay. He actually made the initial discovery that set the stage for all this other research. Okay, what did Arsted figure out? He was doing a demonstration with a compass and an electric circuit. Okay. And he noticed that when he switched on the electricity, the compass needle moved. Wait, seriously? Just turning on the electricity made the compass go haywire? Yep. It was a total accident, but a lucky one. That simple observation proved that there was a direct link between electricity and magnetism. That's amazing. So Arsted accidentally stumbled upon one of the most fundamental forces in the universe. It's a classic example of how scientific discoveries often happen in the most unexpected ways. That's so inspiring. It makes you wonder what other amazing discoveries are waiting to be made. It's incredible to think that all these scientists, working in different countries in different times, all contributed to our understanding of this incredible force of nature. It really highlights how science is a collaborative effort. Yeah. Building upon the work of those who came before us. Yeah. And it shows that even seemingly simple observations can lead to profound breakthroughs that change the world. It's, it's amazing to think that something we can't even see has such a huge impact on our lives. It really is. Yeah. And it's not just, you know, practical applications like communication and medicine. Right. Understanding electromagnetic waves helps us like understand the universe around us. Oh, wow. So how does that work? Okay, so think about it. Light is an electromagnetic wave. Okay. So when we look at the stars, mm -hmm. we're actually seeing light that's traveled like uh, across vast distances of space, sometimes yeah. for millions or even billions of years. Whoa, so the light from those distant stars is like a time machine showing us what the universe looked like a long time ago. Exactly. And astronomers use um, different types of electromagnetic waves, okay. like radio waves and infrared, Brand. to study objects that are too faint or too far away to be seen with visible light. Oh, that's cool. It's like they've got a whole toolbox of invisible waves to explore the cosmos. They do. And they're constantly making new discoveries, learning more about the universe all the time. That's so cool. It makes you realize that there's so much more to the world than like what we can see with our own eyes. Absolutely. And it makes you wonder, like, mm -hmm. what else is out there that we haven't discovered yet? What other secrets of the universe are waiting to be unlocked? That's what I love about science. It's like <laughs> a never-ending adventure of discovery. I couldn't agree more. So as you go about your day today, yeah. think about all the ways you're interacting with the electromagnetic spectrum. You mean like when I use my phone or watch TV? Exactly. But also, you know, think about the sunlight warming your skin, yeah. the colors of the rainbow, even the heat from your stovetop. Wow. It's all thanks to electromagnetic waves. Wow. I never realized how much these invisible waves are a part of our everyday lives. They really are. And, you know, who knows what amazing new ways we'll find to use them in the future. Maybe we'll even figure out how to travel faster than the speed of light. Now, that would be an incredible deep dive. Thanks for taking us on this journey through the electromagnetic spectrum. Yeah, of course. It's been an eye-opening experience. It's been my pleasure. And remember, keep exploring, keep questioning, and never stop learning. The universe is full of wonders waiting to be discovered.